Uh, I'm very excited to present to you what we've been working on for the last couple of years. It's the first time in front of so many experts, so um, please be, bear with me. Before I get started, let me just really roughly tell you how computers work. The design of current operating systems is over half a century old. In many aspects, it really feels like the Tower of Babel. I stole the idea of this analogy from a presentation Justin Cormack gave a couple of years ago. At the bottom, we have the hardware. In the middle, we have a kernel that abstracts the hardware. And on top, we have applications that can access these abstractions with system calls. Now, what's wrong with this approach? Well, Linux, for instance, has over 30 millions of lines of code. Each line is critical. Each line you have to trust. An exploit of a likely flaw in any part of the system and any part of the kernel results in the compromise of the whole system. Additionally, with the vast numbers of system calls and flat file systems, the attack vector for applications to the kernel is huge. Microsoft Research published an excellent paper where they have identified seven properties of highly secure devices. Hardware root of trust. Ian already talked about TPMs. This is essential. Two, defense in depth. Well, exploiting a likely bug in a driver or a network stack is fatal. Defense in depth would be if every component was strongly isolated and access to resources and services limited to what they really need. Small trusted computing base. Uh, general purpose operating systems, the, the TCP is, is extremely large. Dynamic compartments. Um, in Linux, you, you can do compartmentalization with virtualization, um, like Cube or Cubes OS does. But even most hypervisors contain a very large TCB. You could also do some form of compartmentalization with something like tr ARM Trust Zone, but that's hardly dynamic. Five, passwordless uh, authentication basically means use certificate-based authentication. Six, error reporting. That's a no-brainer. Uh, also, Ian talked about this at length. We want to know when and why our devices fail. Renewable security. Well, there are two main categories when it comes to renewable security. One, fix vulnerabilities quickly with updates. And two, detect and recover from breaches. A compromised kernel is really hard to detect and recover from. You could do it in firmware. I'm thinking heads or safe boot. I truly believe that we as a community can do a lot better with the properties I highlighted in yellow. Now, even though Linux, for instance, is open source, Answering this question is not easy. The complexity is just too overwhelming. How can we prove the trustworthiness of a product? In essence, this is the question that we aim to answer. Gapfruit TEP is a microkernel operating system with capability-based security. I will go more into detail what this means. It is built with a Gnode framework. For those of you that don't know Gnode, it's by far the most advanced framework for building microkernel systems. It has been around for over 13 years. It's, a, it's an exceptional community. Gapfruit TEP supports multiple migration paths with different runtimes, driver environments, different kernels, and virtualization. Let me tell you more about the core concepts of Gapfruit TEP. On one hand, you have strong isolation of every component in the system. 
On the other, we govern the trust relationship of every part of the system. People, people are usually familiar with the term sandbox. The goal is to isolate untrusted code from breaking out. Enclaves, on the other hand, try to protect critical code from untrusted environment. Our building blocks are called slices. They combine the properties from sandboxes with the properties from enclaves. This isolation is for device drivers, protocol stacks, multiplexer, and, and applications the like. A slice itself can contain one or several components, even full-blown VMs. We call this nested configuration mechanism. I will talk about that more later. Each component in the system only gets access to the resources and services it really needs. This brings me to the second core concept, control over dependencies. There are three types of dependencies. The first type is about resource distribution, where a parent spawns a child and provides resources such as RAM and CPU time. It also establishes access to other services that other slices may provide. This brings me to the second dependency type. Slices are connected with each other in a service-oriented architecture, where a client depends on a server. The final type of dependency is about software supply chain. The concept of how software dependencies are defined and verified is very similar to the packet management of NixOS. We now see three views of the same system. To argue about the trustworthiness of a specific component is to isolate, to control your dependencies, and to simplify. With this approach, we always know the TCP of every component in the system. The system is brought up in three stages. Stage zero holds the static system, only the microkernel and basic components to get the system running. This part is protected by SRTM. Stage one is for board support package developers. And stage two is where you deploy your slices to. There are many use cases for an OS like this. Think safety critical scenarios where security matters. Since you know the TCB of every component, you can certify just that part of the system while being able to update the rest. Another use of this operating system is currently in use in the banking and payment industry. Together with HSM vendors, we build T appliances that can be integrated into existing infrastructure. In my opinion, these are the four mandatory T requirements. We want to isolate the T app from any interference and leakage. We want to attest or verify the runtime integrity of the T app. We want to create an immutable record from the execution, including input, output, time, and device state. We want to make sure that only authorized entities can start an execution. A T should prove that a certain output was generated from a specific input executed at a specific time with specific code. Now this shows a high level picture of a how an appliance running Gapfruit T is integrated in less trusted infrastructure with gRPC. We see the application within the T and its trust graph down to the hardware root of trust. To execute the app, one sends a signed request to the gRPC server, which starts the application and then receives a signed response. The response is signed with an attestation key only accessible within the security domain of that device. 
Gap for T provides confidence in the absence of functional impurity. We measure, measure the full transitive closure of the TCB of the app and make sure that the state of the runtime does not change. A quote from a T will return all dependencies in form of a Merkle tree. Let's zoom into the appliance. This shows a simple service topology. On the left, we see a gRPC server. The gRPC server is exposed to an external network. This is really complex code, third-party code, lots of threads, TCP session handling, TLS, HTTP, protobuf parsing. A network attacker would most likely attack this component. The system is built in a way that we don't need to put too much trust in this exposed and complex slice. After receiving and a request, it forwards it to the T security monitor. The T security monitor has two distinct responsibilities. Access control for requests and attestation for responses. The T slice executes the application and sends back the response. The toolkit is highly customizable. This shows a, a multi-tenant scenario with multiple T slices per tenant. But I don't want to go, spend too much time discussing this. Let's dive into the T slice. This slide shows the nested configuration mechanism I mentioned earlier. A slice contains one or more components. The T manager controls the other components. The T runtime spawns the application runtime. The hashing ROM calculates the hash over an application image and provides the image to the T uh, to the application runtime. The T manager receives requests configures the T runtime to spawn the application runtime. It establishes channels to standard in, standard out, standard error of the application runtime. The T manager then monitors the environment and sends back the response after the app has terminated. The system is built to protect against time of check, time of use attacks. A privileged admin attacker may, may try to change the app at a weird time. We currently provide JVM and WebAssembly as, run, as app runtimes. But with this approach, any runtime that Gnode supports is possible, even full-blown VMs or lightweight unikernel runtimes. Um, I'm thinking solo file. Until now, we've only talked about the security architecture. I'm now going to talk about the application developer's experience. Well, Unix has, has its faults. However, there is one concept that is quite beautiful. Do one thing, but do it well. This in combination with the standard interfaces made Unix so popular. It lets you chain different apps together. Write something to standard in of one process, pipe standard out to another, uh, of standard in to another, and so on and so forth. Now, this is the simplicity I expect for a T application. I have input that needs processing. I have output that matters. I have diagnostic information. And I want to know that everything went as expected. Send it in, send it out, send it error, and the exit code. Now, what we need is to deploy this app to a gap for T and wrap it so it fulfills the mandatory requirements described earlier. Isolation property, authorization property, attestation and audit property. The app developer does not need to deal with attestation or special details of the many Enclave frameworks. Attestation is part of the signed response, including the hash of the input and the information about the TCB. 
the TCP is represented in form of a Merkle tree. The output of send it out is signed with an output key. This enables us to chain TEE apps together or use it as a sign request for an HSM. And the whole response is signed with an attestation key only accessible from within the security mo uh, monitor of that domain. Let me talk about use cases. Many banks still work with a lot of paper. A rule of thumb, the older a financial service is, the better it is automated. Compliance, for instance, is, is often still done on paper. The compliance processes in banking are very expensive, especially when you need an audit trail for internal or governmental regulations, for example, AML or KYC, the bank employee vouches with their signature. The way it goes is a bank employee receives a signed request for a credit approval. The person goes through the checklist with the information that is provided and they then decide and sign that request to pass it on for further processing. A copy goes to the archive. Well, since Gapfruit T can prove that a certain output was generated from a specific input executed at a specific time with specific code, we can now automate this compliance process. We have structured input such as a KYC report. We pass this to the T. The T application goes through the checklist and decides. The T sends back the response with additional information. Since the response is signed with an attestation key, which is only available within the T, the response can now be added to an audit trail and verified at any time. Here are some ideas for T applications in the finance industry. Evaluate amount of time of a type of a business transaction, for instance. Go through an allow list or block list for origin or destination of transaction. I'm thinking countries, accounts, personas, IDs, Bitcoin addresses. Validate a transaction. Uh, I'm thinking quarter nodes, um, database transactional hooks, and so on. You can also use it for confidential multi-party computation over private privacy sensitive data. This concludes my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm really looking forward to your questions.